Hi guys, um, my name is Jane. Um, I said I'd share my story, which is um, I was in a relationship with a narcissist for, for almost four years. Um, over them four years, he was very, very physically, emotionally, spiritually, sexually abusive. I was constantly under attack during the time. Um, me being the understanding person that I am, I would always try and fix every situation. Like I was always to blame. I was a liar. I was a cheat. I was unreliable. I was sneaky. Um, I was all these horrible things that I had never been made out. I'd never been before, and it made me question me. Like I kept bringing it back to me. What am I doing wrong? You know. Um. Why am I making such a mess of this relationship? This relationship, it would be so much better if I worked so much harder at it. But I was working at it. You know, I was entirely transparent. The more transparent I became, um, the harder it, the relationship became. You know, the more I tried to prove myself that I was this innocent, trustworthy person, the less I was believed. You know? Um, don't get me wrong, there were some very, very good times in the relationship. For the first year, it was fantastic. We built a really, really good friendship. Um, we became very, very close. You know, we would have spent an awful lot of time together. Um, I couldn't have met a nicer guy. Like, I was like, where's this fella coming from? And this is who I've been waiting for all my life, kind of thing. And, um... I think that was one of the hardest things at the end to wrap my head around was that none of them good times were real. You know, like I'd constantly question myself in the back of my mind going, no, they had to be. You know, you couldn't pretend that. Like, it had to be real. But, you know, through educating myself and through being open and honest and sharing and being open to listening to things I've learned about narcissists, you know, even things that were very hard for me to hear about myself, like you have to take the open to take everything on board. Um, being in a relationship with a narcissist will probably be the, one of the hardest journeys you'll take in your life, you know, and you can't change that journey, but you can change what becomes of you after that journey, you know, like, I've been left with long lasting injuries and things and when I'm actually I was discarded very brutally one year ago today. Um one year ago today I climbed into bed and didn't get up for three months. You know? It was one year ago today it was the last time I turned off the lights in my house. You know? Um and that things like that's become my norm. You know, like the lights are never off in my house because I would always have that fear that he would come back and he would break into the house again and stuff, you know. Um they say hindsight is a great thing and it really, really is. If I had any idea of the kind of person I was getting involved with, I certainly wouldn't have gotten become involved with them. You know, I would have kept walking and um I certainly wouldn't have become involved with him, you know. Um, after my discard, before my discard, I didn't know I was dealing with a narcissist. I thought he had maybe suffered from paranoia from you no know, years of drug, drug use and that. Um, so after my discard, even though I was lying in bed and I was broken, like I couldn't even identify with myself anymore as a person, I didn't know who I was anymore. You know, the person that I, the person that I was, she, she just didn't exist. She was gone, you know, um, from the gaslighting alone, like it got so bad. Like I had lost that much of my identity that I had actually sat down one day and tried to take my own life because I couldn't continue with my life because I didn't know who I was anymore. I was this horrible person, you know, and. There were so many problems in the relationship and I was being made to believe that I was the cause of them and I was at the root of them and the relationship would work would be so much better if I worked harder at it, you know? Um, 
for me in my relationship, as I said, there was a lot of physical abuse. Um, I've had numerous broken bones. Um, and I was made to believe they were my fault too. You know, and um, they're not our fault. You know, it's not our fault getting into a relationship with somebody like this. Um, it's it's not our fault. I can't stress that enough. You know, um, like for even myself, like I sat with all the the self, you know, the self blame, the self doubt, the self loading. You know, I sat with all the selfs. You know, I spent three months broken in bed. I'd barely get up to wash myself. You know, um. I'd only leave the house if I really, really, really had to. And even then, like I'd try and make myself invisible. I'd try and hide myself, you know. I didn't want to I didn't want the world to see me because I was this horrible, horrible person, you know? And I suppose like being it's like a little anniversary today, you know, a year from my discard and if I sit back and think about who I was a year ago today and how I was feeling and I don't identify with her anymore you know um, I focus today on my recovery like I'm not just free from a narcissistic relationship we're in recovery you know and it's an ongoing process you know um, I really threw myself down the rabbit hole um, of learning about narcissism you know and in some ways you can overdo it and that can be a bad thing too, you know. So I had to learn how to find the balance, like to get the balance right as much as I was learning about narcissism and sociopaths and dark triads and Jezebel spirits and different things. I had to make sure that I learned a lot about myself as well because I need to be able to I needed to be able to identify me again. Um I would love love nothing more to go back to the person that I was before I had my narcissist relationship um you know but I've accepted I can't ever go back to her there's been far too much damage done um she doesn't exist anymore you know but I'm growing to love the person that is coming you know the person that I am becoming you know um you learn that you're the light, you, you know, like, they want to be, like, for me, in my relationship with the narcissist I was with, like, he wanted to become me. He wanted me so much that he wanted to become me, you know, that way. And, like, even at the time that I tried to take my own life because of the relationship, I didn't know at the time it was because of the relationship, you know. Um, I thought I was losing my mind that I was... Just this horrible, horrible person, you know, and nothing could be could have been further from the truth, you know. Um I became a prisoner, you know, even when he wasn't there, I still would still have felt very much controlled by him, you know, that way, like even when he wasn't there, he could be fifty miles away and I would feel like he was only feet away from me, like I always felt watched. You know, I always felt that he, I always felt that he was watching me and listening to me and different things. And it was only after the breakdown of when I was discarded that I found out that he had hidden apps on my phone and stuff where all my calls and texts and things were going to his PC and stuff. So you had like you no know, privacy whatsoever. You know that way. Not that I needed any because I would have been entirely transparent with him. You know. Like, as I said, I didn't realise Sean, I didn't realise he suffered from a personality disorder. But um, I knew there was something very, very wrong and I endeavoured to help him. Like, that's what us empaths do. Like, we put our own needs aside and we help others, you know, that way. Um, I didn't realise at the time he couldn't be helped, you know. Um, I mean, geez, wow, I used to practice Reiki on him, I would auric cleanse and angel heal and I really 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 tried to pour the good into some into them you know but you can't pour good it's like pouring it into a sieve you know it just pours straight back out the bottom of it you know it doesn't work you know 
I think the hard one of the hardest parts for me to accept after my discard and stuff. You know when I started on my healing journey, like I know I was discarded a year ago. He tried to hoover a few months ago, but he came back to a very different woman. I was quite ready for him. You know that way I had started learning about narcissism and nurse MPD, and he came back to a very well informed woman. He, he and he couldn't believe it. He he just didn't accept it. You know that way. Um, if I, well, if I knew then what I know now, I certainly wouldn't have ever got into a relationship with him. If I knew then what I know now, I probably wouldn't have had a lot of relationships or friendships that I had in my life because I didn't understand narcissism, you know? I would always look at people as, you know, I'd say that something happened in their life that that's broken them, you know. But when you're, when you're dealing with narcissists, you know, it's, you can say, oh, they don't know what they're doing and, you know, with treatment, they can become self-aware. From my experience, you know, they are very self-aware. Mine was, he knew to hide the abuse, you know. Um, Today, I still suffer with anxiety, you know. Um, I'm very fearful of new situations and new people. And, but I do my best. I push myself, you know. I have to keep pushing myself to get past it. Because if you don't try and push yourself onto a better quality of life, you might as well be, we might as well still be with them. You know, because when I think of how miserable I was in the relationship that I was so desperately trying to hold together, you know, um, one of the hardest things for me to accept, you know, when I started on my journey of re healing and recovery was the betrayal, you know, like that betrayal, this person you trusted the most in the world, you know, could betray you so badly in a way that it's so very hard to wrap your head around, like, it, they're so disordered, you know. Um, t today, like, if I was to watch a documentary about an innocent person on that row that fights with our innocence for 20 years, I can relate to that person today because I know what it's like to stand and fight for your innocence and constantly fight and fight and fight. You had to fight, you had to do, you had to fight to be truthful, you know. Your truth wasn't good enough. Um, the more honest I was, the less I was believed, you know, um, I was completely isolated from my, my children, my grandchildren, um, friends, I had none left, you know, um, from all the gaslighting and the trauma bonding and everything else, like, I was in this time a year ago I was incapable of having a conversation. You know, I couldn't could just couldn't even speak to my children. You know, I was making silly mistakes in work. Um everything was so hard. You know, and today I know none of that was because of me, it was because of everything that was being dumped on me, you know. Um it is quite hard today, I like I'm a year away from them. Um and it's still very hard, you know. I still hide, spend have my days in bed, and like I'm lucky now at work. I leave hit my home the days that I'm in work, and the rest of the week I'm at home. But I'm and I'm learning about narcissism, but I'm putting a lot of work into learning about myself. You know, and that's the key to it. Don't like for me anyway. Um, like as I've said, uh, like I was discarded a year ago today, so we weren't, weren't long in the first lockdown, you know. So oh, I was going through all these different emotions and thoughts and everything else, and that there was no support there, you know, because of because of lockdown and everything being shut, you know. So I had to get myself through, it, you know, and I've done that to the best of my ability, you know, and I'm proud of the woman that's sitting here today compared to the woman that was sitting 
was sitting in bed broken a year ago today, you know. Um, when we get away from the narcissist, it's so important to learn about narcissism. You know, it's, it's so important. I think it should be taught in schools. You know, it's it's such an evilness. You, you know, to get, and I think it was so hard to fathom it because you just can't believe people like this exist in the world. You, you know that way. And then the more you learn about them, and yeah, it's just it's terrifying, but it's fascinating. You know that. The depraved depravity of some people, you know, like, um, in the time that I've got away, my ex, like, I've come to find out how much of a deviant he actually is and how dangerous he actually is and the things he has done in his past, you know. Um, when I found out I was dealing with a narcissist, I started getting a little bit stronger, you know, and, um, Started getting out of my bed a little bit more and started learning. That was when I started the learning journey, you know. And I started doing practice, practice and Tai Chi and doing a little bit of Reiki on myself every day and stuff, you know. And it does, it does work. Like it, it, we let, everybody finds their own way through it, but you have to be open to it. You have to allow yourself to heal, you know. Like, um... My my vibration today is an awful lot higher than it was a year ago today. You know, a year ago today I was on my knees. I didn't want to be alive anymore. You know, um, I didn't feel good enough to be part of the world. You know, I was such a horrible person that had ruined everything. And, um, none of it was true, you know, that way. Um, my discard was really, really brutal. Um... We had spent a number of months fixing up his house and stuff, and I was like a prisoner. I could, he would follow me into the bathroom, to, you know, I couldn't even go to the local shop. Um, I couldn't even see my children, you know, or my grandchildren. And I was constantly, constantly, constantly under attack, you know. Um, even when I went to sleep, I wasn't safe from him. You know, he'd wake me up in the middle of the night with a knee in the back and then be like, why are you awake? I know you're up to something, you know. And like the, the emotional damage that relationship has done to, to me, I don't, I'll never be the same person again. I can't be her anymore, you know. But I, I'm growing to love the person that I am becoming, you know. I'm getting better, I'm not getting bitter, you know, that way. Um, I wouldn't recommend it to anybody unless you're very, very sure you can do it. But um, when I started, when I started learning about narcissism, I reached out to his ex-partners. And I've told some sh really, really shocking stories, you know. And um, that made me all the more determined to stand up to them, you know. And it's not something I'd recommend to anybody, you know, unless you're really, really certain you can do this because it's after the discard and stuff that they can become very unpredictable. And that's something I learned with my ex, you know, that way. And... <clears throat> to, but I stood up to him, you know, I revealed him everywhere, I had him in court, um, it didn't make me feel any better, but I let him know that somebody will stand up to you, you know, the day, the day has come that somebody is stronger than that, somebody that you have put through hell has realised just how strong they are. You know, and they're not going to take it off you. And hopefully by standing up, they'll prevent, it'll prevent it, you doing it to another woman, you know, that way. Um, and it was only because of my own strength as an individual, knowing him as well as I know him, um, knowing how careful I had to be, how safe I had to be, and I still have to be, you know. 
Um, sometimes I just say, I sh maybe I shouldn't have stood up to him, you know, maybe I should have just done what the rest of did and, you know, just ran away and tried to rebuild their lives as best as they could. But I, f I felt, I felt a I had to do, you know, um, I've always stood up for injustice and, and stuff, you know, and I stood up to him, you know, and I brought him to his knees, you know, um, Sometimes I regret it, like I'm certainly not a narcissistic person, you know, that way I'd always, always go out of my way to help people, you know. And it's like when some of the videos I've watched during this learning journey and stuff, you know, empathic people, if they are going to stand up to the narcissist, they'll only ever do it to the narcissist, you know, they, they mirror them back at them, you know, and that's what I did, you know. Um. And he couldn't believe it, you know. They just can't, couldn't believe it. Like, they'd never been spoken to that way before in their life. Um, but I'm okay with that, you know. You know. Um, I, For me, I know how dangerous my ex can be. I know deep down in my soul that man is capable of doing to a woman, you know. Um, I worry about his new supply. You know, I worry what he will do to her. You know, for me, like, before I met my ex, I would have been the strongest woman I knew, you know, that way. Um, I didn't, I didn't want to be alive anymore because of what he was being put through. You know, and I couldn't, at the time, I couldn't ad identify it. Because... When you don't even know about narcissism when your life is impacted by a narcissist, you know, and knowledge is power. We need to know about these people before we meet them, before the damage is done, you know, and we need to, we need to join together. We need to share our stories, share our experience, our strengths, our hopes, our fears. You know, and that's one thing that's really got me through, and it was so important to me in my in so important to me in my recovery is, I have to be very honest and very vulnerable in my sharing. In order for me to heal. You know, and we will heal. You know that way, we will get better. You know, we're bright. We're bright lights in the world, and. Our narcissist sexes aren't it? They're just surrounded by darkness, you know? And they'll just take, suck and suck and suck the life out of you, you know, that way. Um, I remember a couple of months after my discard, I walked into a family member's home one day and they said, wow, never realised how small you are. And I'm like the same height I've always been, but it was in that moment that I knew, like, he had stripped me of my my personality and my presence and you know my aura and he made me look smaller you know other people looked at me and I didn't look like the big bubbling personality that I was before I met him you know I was small I couldn't communicate I was shy I was afraid um but we can't keep giving them that power over our lives. We can knowledge is power. We can't keep letting them define our lives, you know. Um, and all I can say is just go, no contact. You know, it's, it'll break your heart to do it. You know, it's so hard because you will want to communicate with this person. You know, of course you will want to talk to them at one stage in your life. They were your best friend, you know. But don't do it, you know, as soon as you let that door open a little bit. It'll be worse than it was before, you know. And even though you, you feel so low on yourself, you're still worth so much more than that, you know. For me, my narcissist ex didn't want to be with me. He wanted to become me. He wanted my light. 
You know, he wanted my strengths. You know, he wanted the sparkle in my eye. You know, and these are all things that he did get. But my vibration won't allow me to stay down that low. He will... N I'm taking my power back, you know. And I'm doing it through healing, through honest and open sharing. And helping others, you know. And by helping others, I'm helping myself as well, you know, that way. And it's lovely to be able to turn my experience into someone else's survival guide I seen written somewhere one day, you know, like it's it's horrible to go through this journey, but you know what, when you're at the other side and God willing, you know, you're strong and you're stronger than you were before you met this person, you know. You will start healing and you'll start making a difference in your own life and that difference will start impacting everybody's life. You know, and if you can help others you know, be honest, be open, and share your story, and because like I can't stress it enough, knowledge is power. You know we we need to learn so much about these people. You know, and for me that's it. And look, together we'll heal. You know, we will heal if we're open to it. We will heal. You know, remember who you were, not who this person told you you were. You know. You know, remember what you can do, what not what this person told you you can't do, you know? Yeah. You know, um, it can be so uh, dangerous, the situation with these people. My own experience, like, there was times I would root, was rooted to the ground and I would just stand rigid for hours, being screamed at for things I hadn't done, you know? And if you're out, stay out. If you're no contact, I can't stress it enough, stay no contact, you know? And let yourself heal, you know? Feel the emotions that you're going through. Um, and allow yourself to heal. You've every right to feel better. You know, you've just been attacked physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, sexually. You've been just been under so many attacks that it takes time to so give yourself that time to give it we have to give ourselves that time you know baby steps you know that way baby steps you know my very young very young granddaughter and her attitude to life is slow and steady everything is always slow and steady and i've taken that on board now as well everything is slow and steady you know and don't be doubting ourselves we can't be We're everything they want, to, they want to be and they can never be. You know, we've beautiful souls, we've beautiful spirits. You know, we've beautiful shine to us. You know, don't think it's not going to get any better. It will get better. You know, together we'll heal. And I'm so grateful for this, for an act survivor and the different groups that I'm in because I probably wouldn't be here today without them. You know, they've helped save my life. And if I can go on and help save even one person's life, you know, everything I went through will be worth it because it's, ta it's taught me another whole side of life, you know. But um, I'll wrap it up here because I'm just rambling now, you know. And uh, I wish us all well, you know, and I wish us all love and light in your journey. Yeah. Together we will heal, you know. The bright light will always win over darkness, you know. It doesn't matter how dark night gets, the light will always come out, you know, in the morning. So be strong and be brave. Thanks, guys. Bye.